Interior, King's Landing, Queen's Chambers, Night. Queen Cersei Lannister slips, sleeps fitfully. The Lannister crest hangs above her bed, a lion surrounded by red. Cersei wakes up with a start, clutching her belly. Seven hells. Then red spreads through her small clothes. She feels blood. Kyburn! Cersei daring the tears to spill from her eyes. Kyburn enters with a bag. He bows. Your Highness, something's wrong with the baby. Let me look, Your Highness. Kyburn moves his hand from her belly and takes out a type of stethoscope. He listens to Cersei's womb and listens and listens. Your Highness, I'm afraid uh, no. you have miscarried. No. Your child is gone. Cersei refuses to cry. She grabs a pitcher from her bedside table and throws it. It hits the wall, shattering. Commander Greyjoy has returned, and he has brought the golden company. Cersei regains her composure. Tell him I will greet him soon. Cersei rises from her bed. Your grace, you should rest. Your services are not required, Kyburn. You need to be careful after a miscarriage. This is not the first time this has happened to me. I will be fine. Your grace, I recommend Leave. you... Kyburn bows and leaves. Cersei puts on a grim to preferment smile. This is but a setback. Exterior, Harry's ship, captain's quarters, sailing, day. The quarters of a great joy navy captain are decorated with the sigil of a kraken. Harry sits behind his desk, looking at a map. Theon Greyjoy paces. Stop, boy, you're making me dizzy. Then stop watching. We need a plan. What do you suggest? Caution. Get Euron back to the Iron Islands and fight him on the open sea. We will prevail in our environment. Euron has 500 ships and 20,000 men. We have... 50. But they're ironborn. So are Euron's men. Then what do you suggest? Track his ship. Find Euron. Probably in King's Landing. And then what? Find Yara and rescue her. What about Euron? Fuck Euron. Yara is our mission. Every day, every night, she stays with that Kingslayer and Kinslayer. That's a day and night of torture. Are you with me? Or am I on my own? I'm with you, but don't expect me not to kill Euron if I see him. Theon nods. We may not have numbers or strength, but we have stealth and maybe surprise. Herrick exits to the deck. Theon watches, walks up to Herrick's map and places his hand over King's Landing. Exterior, Winterfell, Targaryen camp, day. Daenerys Targaryen sits on a large rock. Rhaegel and Drogon rest nearby. Jon Snow approaches. Daenerys? What is it, Lord Snow? Or is it Lord Targaryen? I'm the same man I've always been. I was the rightful heir to the Iron Throne, to the Targaryen legacy. Now, I'm unsupped by my lover. Nothing has changed. I still support your rule. You were born to it. You were raised to it. I was raised a bastard, not worth much. Danny turns to face him with a softness in her eyes. You're worth much more than you think. You have a family who loves you. Your mother, Liana, died to give birth to you. Your father, Rhaegar, started a war to bring you to this world. Ned Stark protected you at great risk to himself and his family. Your people love you. You're the mother of dragons, breaker of chains. I'm just a snow. You're so much more than a snow. Daenerys climbs off the rock and strides towards Drogon. The dragon lifts his head, watching her. Jon follows. Robert Baratheon started a war that ended most of my family because of your mother's secrecy. It wasn't just my mother who wanted to keep it a secret. Perhaps if my brother and your mother had been more open with everyone, all of this could have been avoided. Winter still would have come. The Night King would still be on the move. Yes, but maybe there would be no petty squabbles in Westeros and we could focus on the actual enemy. But you would never sit on the Iron Throne. Will I now, Aegon Targaryen? Denny mounts Drogon, taking off, flying over Jon in a spiral. Rhaegel follows Danny and Drogon. John watches Danny soar. Interior, King's Landing, Westeros map, day. 
Looking pale, Circe stands in the center of the Westeros map. Her expression belies no pain, but her eyes do. Euron Greyjoy stands above her, stands across from her, watching her every move. Harry Strickland, a nervous-looking, if noble man, stands next to him. Thank you, Lord Greyjoy, for bringing the Golden Company to me. Harry Strickland, I thank you for your service to the Crown. You will be reimbursed for your faithfulness. Yes, of course he will. But what did you intend to do with the Golden Company? Win the war, the Great War. We will secure Westeros once and for all. We're going to fight against the, this Night King. That's Jon Snow's fantasy. No, not secure Westeros against the Night King. Secure Westeros against the Stark bastard and the Targaryen bitch. She smiles, but it is strained. Please leave me and Lord Greyjoy to confer privately. Harry bows, looks to Euron, and nods before exiting. Cersei slumps a little as Strickland leaves. Euron circles her like a hawk, looking suspicious. Something's wrong. How observant of you. You seem weak. I am strong. No, you're not. Euron places a hand on her belly. She stiffens. Ah, that's it, is it? The brother-lover baby's gone, eh? Take your hand off me. You know, I could give you a child. What I want is the Seven Kingdoms. I could fuck you and marry you, and we could rule the Seven Kingdoms together. When I get the Seven Kingdoms, you will get what you want, but not before. Marrying, then fucking. It's a different way to go. For a queen, you certainly follow a lot of rules. One fuck with me and you'll forget all about that brother lover of yours. Where is he, by the way? Get out. His amusement turns stony. Euron exits through toward the throne room. Cersei looks down at the map of Westeros. She looks toward Casterly Rock, then towards Winterfell. Interior, King's Landing, throne room, day. Awestruck, Harry Strickland stands in front of the Iron Throne. Euron enters. Lord Greyjoy. Strickland. So that's Queen Cersei. Yes. And this is the Iron Throne? Yes. Strickland nudges Euron with his elbow. Bit of an eyesore, isn't it? Put you on dry land and you lose your sense of humor. Do you want something? We will get paid, won't we? The queen begging your pardon doesn't look well. You will be paid in full once your assignments are completed. Of course, of course. Yaron rests his foot on the steps leading to the Iron Throne. Strickland notices. You want it, don't you? Everyone wants it. That's the point of it. Are we allied to you or to the queen? Just follow orders and stay out of my way. Strickland gives a bow. Of course, Lord Greyjoy. Strickland nods and exits. Yaron smiles at the Iron Throne, wickedness in his eyes. Interior, Winterfell. Daenerys' tent, night. Daenerys sits looking at the dragon tapestries and banners. Jorah Mormont enters. He bows deeply. Khaleesi. So Jorah, it is good to see you. Are you well? Yes. Do I not look well? No, you look pensive. I'm fine. In my experience, when a lady, even a queen, even a Khaleesi, is that she is fine, she may not be. He kneels next to her. It's Viserion. It must be difficult. I thought he was dead. But now I find out something worse. Much worse. He's enslaved. You want to free him? Like all the others, yes. But I fear the Night King, King's hold may be too strong to break. You are the breaker of chains. If there is a way, you will find it. Thank you for your confidence in me. Being in the North has been humbling. The North can be stubborn, but they will warm to you. They not need 
to with John's claim to the Iron Throne. You are stronger than he is. But he is their rightful heir. He is my brother's son. I must honor my brother's memory by honoring John and his claim to the throne. I don't believe John has any intentions towards the Iron Throne. What makes you so sure about that? He's also a Stark. A Stark or Winterfell. After all this is over, he will likely remain here. His sister may have other plans. His sister? Well, his cousin will just be happy to have him safe at home. After all the Starks have lost. Do you miss this? The North? Not the Winters. They share a smile. Believe in John, my lady. He is loyal to you. Tyrion Lannister enters. Who is loyal to you? Jorah was just assuring me that John is still loyal to me, despite all the recent revelations. Of course he is, Your Grace. Tyrion bows. The Starks have rebelled before. Most recently against my bastard of a nephew, yes. You think John will remain loyal to me even though I am below him in the line of succession? I think what we need to focus on is defeating the Night King. The Iron Throne comes later. Daenerys stands. Thank you for your frank frankness, Lord Tyrion. I'm always at your service, my queen. Daenerys and Tyrion hold each other's gazes. Jorah watches the two of them. I should go, my lady. Of course. Good night, Sir Jorah. Good night. Jorah exits. Tyrion looks at Daenerys carefully. What? You're grieving. I am? My queen, you hide your emotions well, but I have found that grief is the hardest to bear and the hardest to hide. She touches one of the dragons on the banners. Lost. Vissarion. It is a tragedy. I think I'm with him sometimes, in my dreams. I once dreamed of dragons. Really? Maybe there's another Targaryen among us. No, no, I am my father's son. Of course, Lord Tywin. Yes. Thank you, Lord Tyrion. It's good to not feel alone in all this. As long as I am by your side, you will never be alone, my queen. Tyrion nods. Danny nods in return. Tyrion bows and exits. Interior Winterfell, Great Hall, Night. In the Great Hall, a great mass of Dothraki, including Acho and the Unsullied, are gathered around Arya Stark and Missandei. Arya is speaking with Missandei translating. We need Valerian steel. We need it fast. Gendry can teach us to forge it, but we need all of your help to create enough for the coming battle. Miss Undead translates. We have much dragon glass, thanks to your Khaleesi, and dragon fire. We will combine the two and all the weapons we have to create, create Valerian. We'll start immediately. Not immediately. The unsullied and Dothraki parts reveal Sansa Stark looking cross. Sansa? You need sleep. You are exhausted. You all need sleep. This can begin in the morning. You cannot fight if you cannot stand. Tomorrow then. Go get rest. It starts as soon as the sun rises. The crowd disperses, and Miss Undey leaves with them. Sansa walks over to Arya. If they could see me fight, they wouldn't listen to you so easily. They might still listen. We need to prepare for the army of the dead. And we will, but we also need sleep. It's odd how everything has happened the way it is. Strange bedfellows. Yes. I could never have imagined when I was trapped in King's Landing that we would all ever be here again. Those times are in the past. I wish father and mother were here and Rob, and Rickon. But we still have Bran and John. Yes. You should go to bed. I will. Sansa takes Arya's hand and squeezes it. The two sisters smile at each other. Exterior Blackwater Bay, day. Many ships are docked, but the most intimidating is the silence. Theon crouches behind a wall. 
Some soldiers stand near the silence's dock, laughing with each other. The un crawls into a sewer. He smiles when he sees the barrels of wildfire. He crawls back out of the sewer, lights a torch, tosses it in, and runs in the opposite direction as quickly as possible. Boom! The wildfire explodes. It's a minor explosion, but it alerts the soldiers who rush over to the sewer. Boom, boom! A much larger explosion goes off, consuming the soldiers. Panic starts on the dock. In the chaos, Theon runs to the silence, motioning to Herrig, hidden in the crowd, to follow. Interior, King's Landing, Council Chambers, Day. Cersei sits at the council table. Yaron sits across from Cersei, who looks grim. We should send the Golden Company to liberate Casterly Rock. We need to keep them here. And do what? Put down tiny rebellions. The Queen's Guard can handle that. Can they? I believe so. Let them remain here, Your Grace. Take your orders, Lord Greyjoy. Kyburn runs in out of breath. My Queen! What is it? Another rebellion at the harbour. They set off a cachet of wildfire. Your tiny rebels are getting explosive. I'll deal with it with the Golden Company. Euron leaves, clutching the hilt of his sword. Cersei storms out. Interior, King's Landing, Queen's Chambers, Day. Cersei watches out of window in the direction of the harbor as smoke rises. Kyburn enters. Because she spread her legs for that northern bastard, that dragon bitch has more than 100,000 fighters. Daenerys Targaryen. I, on the other hand, have 55,000 fighters at my disposal. 20,000 of them are mercenaries who I pay for their loyalty. Another 20 belong to that arrogant usurper Greyjoy. I fear Lord Greyjoy wants the Iron Throne for himself. He may be able to take it. Or the Stark bastard will, or the Targaryen girl. My queen, can I tell you a story? I'm not a child, Kyburn. <laughs> I think this will interest you. Your back is to the wall. You need help. There is another player on board. Tell me. According to legend, the 13th commander of the Night's Watch fell in love with a woman with skin as white as the moon and eyes like blue stars. Her skin was cold as ice. Are you saying that this Lord Commander had an affair with... What are you saying, Kyburn? This Lord Commander brought her to the Night Fort. He made her his queen. They ruled over the wall together. There was a knight's queen who allied with a man. Cersei pours herself a glass of wine before going back to the window. What are you suggesting? Nothing, my queen. Just a story. I like your stories, Kyburn. If the Night King is real... I believe he is. If an alliance was formed in the past... Yes. Gods know I've married worse men. Cersei smiles. Kyburn smiles with her. And smoke in the distance continues to rise from the harbor. Exterior Winterfell to Garion Camp Day. Campfire smoke blankets the countryside. The footprint for the north and the Targaryen army span leagues. As Jon moves through the camp, he greets fighters. He finally reaches the edge of the camp. Winterfell stands proud, a mirage in the snow. Jon continues toward the castle. The, distance, the distant beating of wings catches Jon's attention. He sees Rhaegal circling above him. Jon watches as Rhaegal lands. The wind from Rhaegal's great wings blow Jon's cloak back. The two regard each other. Jon reaches out a hand. Rhaegal extends his snout. John feels the great heat that emanates from Dragon. Daenerys joins them. Thought you were in the castle. He's lovely, isn't he? He is. I named him for a brother I never knew. It's fitting the two of you share a bond. I came to this continent with three children, the only family I had left. Three beautiful, strong dragons. They are lovely and powerful, like their mother. I miss Viserion. I'm sorry, Daenerys. I couldn't bear to lose another. Rhaegal takes off. 
John pulls Daenerys into his arm as they watch the dragon fly. Interior, Citadel, Meeting Room, Day. The study is sparsely furnished, save for an array of torture implements spread across the table. Spikes and cuffs and knives and ropes. Eight maesters are kneeling. Keyburn stands before them, a glint in his eye. I am here at the request of Queen Cersei, of the House Lannister, the first of her name, Queen of the Andals and the First Men, and protector of the Seven Kingdoms. The maesters look like they've been beaten. Two imposing soldiers loom behind them. Now, I will not ask again. The Queen requires all of the information you have on the Long Night and the others. Kyburn goes to the torture table and runs his fingers over the instruments. I would prefer not to have to torture it out of you. But if you continue to withhold the information I need, you will leave me no choice. The maesters remain silent. After a moment, Kyburn nods to the soldiers. The door opens and the maesters blanch. Four soldiers carry in a large table with straps affixed to various positions. There's a handle under the table. It's the rack. The soldiers place the torture device in front of the maesters. Two soldiers lift Archmaester Marwyn like he weighs nothing. The Archmaester exclaims as he is placed on the rack. His limbs are strapped in place. Kyburn looms over Marwyn. Archmaester, Queen Cersei knows you have information that can be put to good use in the fight to come. Marwyn yelps when a strap is pulled tight. Kyburn is pleased. What information do you have on the Long Night and the others, old friend? Marwyn remains silent. Kyburn gestures to a soldier. The crank is turned and Marwyn's limbs begin to pull. Marwyn holds out until there is an audible crack. He lets out a blood-curdling scream. Uh, language. Kyburn motions for the torture to stop. What Mar kind of language? No human can speak it. Kyburn raises his hand again. Marwyn interrupts. There are symbols. I don't know what they are exactly, but there's a book in the library. And where exactly can I find this book? The soldier turns the crank again slowly and Marwyn screams. Exterior, Winterfell, day. Jamie Lannister rides along the snowy King's Road, his cloak pulled tightly around him. Winterfell dominates the landscape. Interior, Winterfell, Great Hall, day. The heavy snowfall outside casts the Great Hall in a dark, dreary light. A large fire is lit, but everyone is clad in heavy cloaks, nonetheless. John, Daenerys, Sansa, Arya, and Tyrion are gathered before the fire. A large map of Westeros is laid out on a table. The creaking of the double doors alerts them. Jaime enters. He is met with silence. So Jaime, is your army close behind? I'm sorry to say that Cersei will be of no help in the fight against the Night King. I tried to convince her otherwise, to not go against her given word, but she will not see reason. What does she intend to do then? Not fight with us? Daenerys turns to Tyrion. Did you not see this betrayal? Your Grace, I advised you Cersei may be a less trustworthy ally. A less trustworthy ally. Cersei can never be trusted. Frankly, I'm surprised you believed it all, especially you, Lord Tyrion. Even I want to believe in redemption from time to time. Cersei has hired a company of cell swords from Essos to join her army. Her forces are not what they once were. Jaime looks at Daenerys, who betrays no reaction. What does Cersei plan to do with her army? I do not know specifically. Shore up her defenses in King's Landing. Forgive me 
Sir, but what good are you to us if you do not know the aims of your queen, of your sister? Cersei always has an angle. All eyes fall on Tyrion. Trust me, my sister always, always has an agenda. I've never known her to embark down the chosen path without a plan. Whether or not Cersei has something planned, we need to make sure the army that we have here and now is as prepared as possible for the coming battle. John's right. The Night King is closer than ever. That needs to be our biggest priority. For whatever it's worth, I'm here to fight on the side of the living. Jamie unstraps his scabbard and presents it before Daenerys. Daenerys takes a moment to weigh her options, eyeing the golden man before her. Very well. Let us proceed. Interior, King's Landing, Queen's Chambers, day. Cersei sits across from Tytre Nestoris at the Iron Bank. The mountain stand behind Ticho. What do I owe the honor of your presence? We at the Iron Bank have heard of recent difficulties that have arisen in Westeros. Difficulties that may pose problems in the future repayment of your outstanding debts. I am not concerned. You can rest assured you will have the payment once the battle is won. Your Grace, the Iron Bank is less than confident. As of right now, the Golden Company is securing King's Landing and putting down small uprisings. Small annoyances, I assure you. And we have seen no moves on your part toward tackling the growing threats in the North or toward paying us back. The North will no longer be a problem in the near future. Then I will be free to pay back the loan with interest. The door slams open. The mountain is immediately on alert, ready to take down the intruder. Euron saunters in, a broad grin on his face. Oh, stand down, you brute. <laughs> My betrothed. And I will make sure these minor issues are taken care of. Don't you worry. What are you doing here? Ah, I hadn't heard you were engaged. Many congratulations. I'm sure the fish stew at the reception will be incomparable. Having a strong king and a queen will put the public in their place. And once we're married, and the iron... Ironborn take over the city watch, we'll never have to worry about citizens' unrest again. We'll give them something to celebrate and something to fear. Are the Ironborn the best choice for the job? Raping and reaving through small villages is one thing, but in the capital. I've raped and reaved my way through Essos, through more small villages and huge cities than you could ever imagine. The people there scream, just like the people here. And they will be broken just the same. Tell the Iron Bank that I have things well in hand. A Lannister always pays her debts. Tycho can tell that the conversation is over for now. He takes his leave. I pray you two are happy in your union. I look forward to working with you in the future. With that, Tycho exits. The mountain closes the door behind him. About fucking time that was over. Cersei stands. I have an appointment. Ah, my betrothed. Yaron attempts to pull Cersei to him. When will we be married? I can no longer wait. Cersei plants a, pla a placating kiss on his lips and makes eye contact with the mountain over Yaron's shoulder. The mountain steps forward and partially unsheathes his sword. The sound of sliding metal gets Yaron to step back. I'm afraid I must go. We can discuss this later. Cersei strides past Yaren. The mountain falls into step behind her as she leaves. Interior, King's Landing, hallway continuous. Cersei turns to the mountain a step behind her. Has there been word from Kyburn? Exterior, Blackwater Bay, night. The harbor is deserted and silent, save for the lapping of the waves against the boats on the shoreline. Theon and Harrig emerge from a cave at the base of Aegon's high hill. They make their way up along the shoreline. They hide behind a large boulder. Sails are tied. Both of the anchors look to be down. I don't see any light. You're sure Yara's on board? You wouldn't trust Cersei to keep her. You'd want to keep her close. It'll be heavily guarded. I know. You'll be right behind me. Where else would I be? Thank you. No time for all that now. Get on with it. Theon hurries out, followed closely by Harry. They are shadows on the beach. Their footsteps barely make a sound. The waves continue to lap against the boats in the harbor. 
Interior, Winterfell, Sansa's chambers, night. John, Sansa, and Arya are gathered in Sansa's chambers. Arya sits by the fire, whittling a small piece of firewood. Sansa stands beside the fireplace, and John paces. I like what you've changed. I like what you've kept. It reminds me of growing up. What are your plans? What? I asked what your plans are. With Daenerys, without Daenerys, because I need to know what to plan for. You don't trust her. I trust her. John does not believe her. I do. She has my respect for being willing to go beyond the wall to bring you back and for risking losing a dragon for you. And what do you need to plan for if you trust her? If you trust me? The future. I'm trying to think beyond all this to a normal life where I don't have to worry about ice people or warrior dragon queens or brothers who turn out to be cousins and also the rightful heir to the most deadly chair in the world. My plan is to be with my family, Sansa. We've all just gotten each other back. I'm not going anywhere anytime soon if I can help it. Sansa relaxes. But Daenerys is my family now too. And I want her in my life, both, all of you. John looks at Arya. We're going to need each other for what we're about to face. The three lapse into silence again, the sound of Arya's knife against wood audible over the crackle of the fire. What are you making? Arya holds up a piece of wood. It looks like the crude, misshapen figure of a woman in a simple dress. I tried to make one of those dolls Mother used to try giving me. Still not really my thing. I think it's nice. Sansa takes the figure from Arya and places it on the mantle above the fireplace. Interior, King's Landing, Westeros map, night. Cersei stands in the courtyard, the massive painted map of Westeros stretching across the stones. The torchlight flickers. The mountain enters, leading Harry Strickland. The mountain takes his place in the shadows. My father worked his whole life in the best interest of the Seven Kingdoms. They are now mine to rule as I see fit. To follow in his footsteps with power he'd only ever dreamed of. I'm not afraid to do what is necessary to ensure the continued well-being of Westeros, but as much as I wish it was not so, I cannot do it alone. I need men like you and your company to ensure that I remain queen and Westeros secure. You have my loyalty, your grace, of course. The Golden Company is yours to command. Yes, but there must be something more you want. Women, weapons, land. At the word land, Strickland looks down at a map of Westeros. Oh, land it is. I'm prepared to offer you a fine parcel of land in the Reach, borders the River Manda and across the f and access to the finest wine in Westeros. I'm prepared to offer you High Garden in exchange for your unwavering loyalty in the battle to come. Shocked, Strickland bends into a deep bow. Swear allegiance to me alone that your loyalty will be unwavering no matter what is to come. I am honored at your generosity, Your Grace. My men and I are at your full disposal. Your loyalty will not be misplaced, Strickland. You may rise. Strickland stands. I have a task for you. Exterior, silence, night. Theon and Harry silently approach silence, which looks unguarded. The wooden game plank is extended. This is a trap. We don't know that. I'd say it's a pretty damn good thing to assume. If you're having second thoughts, Feel free to meet me back in the cave. I'm finding my sister, with or without you. Theon hurries up the game plank, leaving Herrig on the dock. Interior, silence, night. Theon steps down the narrow stairway leading below deck. Dim lanterns light his way. At the bottom, Theon is met with darkness. Yara? Yara, it's me. Theon, are you here? The silence and darkness stretch on. Dejected, Theon turns back to the staircase. Giving up so soon? Theon whips around at the sound of Ramsay Bolton's voice. Theon nearly trips in his haste to get away. He lands with a thud on the mucky floor. Interior, Dreadford, 
cellar, night, illusion. Theon finds himself in the cellar of the dead fort. Ramsay stands over him. Theon scrambles back in fear. Why are you on the ground? Get up, you useless dog. Terrified, Theon attempts to follow Ramsay's order. Ramsay shoves the sole of his boot into Theon's chest, kicking him back to the ground. Are you fucking deaf? Get up, fucking fool. You can't even follow directions. No wonder your family abandoned you. I'll cut your feet off and feed them to my dogs if you don't listen. Theon kicks directly between Ramsay's legs. Ramsay reels, gasping with pain in the perverse peal of laughter. Theon hurdles himself off the ground and shoulders into Ramsay's chest. Still distracted by the pain, Ramsay falls. Their positions are now reversed. Theon looms over Ramsay. Theon lifts his foot and slams it down on Ramsay's face. Blood splatters and Ramsay's laughter still gurgles. Theon kicks him repeatedly. Gasping with adrenaline and satisfaction, Theon whirls and leaves through the nearest door. Ramsay's deranged, wheezing laughter echoes. Interior, Moat, Kalin, Dungeon, Day, Illusion. Theon bursts through a door and finds himself in the dungeon of Moat Kalin. Shafts of bright sunlight break up the murky darkness. Theon looks around in terror. There are no noises, no yelling from outside, no barking of starving dogs to set off his pants pissing terror. A quiet shuffling from the shadow startles him, and he's immediately on edge again. His eyes adjusting to the murky half light, Theon sees Reek pressed against the far wall. What's happening? Who are you? Theon steps toward Reek, but that sets Reek off. Reek whimpers, struggling to get away from Theon. Theon takes a sharp breath. I'm trying to find my our sister, Yara. She's in danger. Uncle Euron captured her. A flash of recognition catches in Reek's eyes before he shakes his head. Reek has no sister and no uncle. Reek is no one. Fed up, Theon tries to find a way out. Finally, he spots a door near Reek. Come on. Theon grabs at Reek to haul him to his feet. His hand closes around Reek's arm. Reek yells. No! What are you doing? Stand up. I'm not leaving you in this place. No! I can't leave! Reek's cries grow louder. Theon presses on. He hauls Reek, who fights Theon's hold, partially to his feet and makes a move for the door. The heavy sound of many footsteps on the floor above him startles Theon. Reek also hears the footsteps. If he catches me trying to leave, he'll kill me. Reek dissolves into hysterics, his body becoming nearly dead weight. The closer the footsteps come, the slimmer his chance of escape is. Theon knows he needs to make a decision. He drops Reek against the wall. Reek curls in on himself, crying. I'm sorry. Theon bolts through the door. A flight of stairs await him, and he wastes no time. Interior, Winterfell, courtyard, day, illusion. Theon bursts into the courtyard at Winterfell. It's empty. No one is hammering steel. There are no dogs barking, no horses or carts around. The ground is clean, fresh. Tiny, delicate snowflakes drift through the air. In a hurry. Theon freezes. Out of the shadow steps Ned Stark, tall and regal as ever in thick winter furs. The light snow swirls around him, shroud-like. Theon is in awe. How? How are you here? Theon stammers, a young boy again in the presence of Lord Stark. Where were you running off to? Important business to take care of? I'm trying to find my sister, my lord. Is she in Winterfell? No, sir. She's held by my uncle. It must be difficult being kept from family like that. Ned Stabin hits Theon squarely in the chest. My lord, I, I know there's nothing I can do to make up for what I've done, but I am sorry. More sorry than I can ever tell you for everything. You're sorry. Ned steps toward Theon. Theon is frozen in place, in fear, in awe. Do you believe that's enough? To atone for all that you've done to my family, to my home. You betrayed me. You betrayed my sons, my daughters, and the home that raised you. And for what? 
Because you were angry? That is not how a man deals with his anger. Theon knows he must be brave. I know that now, my lord. You did so much for me, and I repaid it with death and destruction. Nothing I can ever do can ever fix that. But I know who I am now, and I'm working to be a better man, a man that you would be proud of. You can never be forgiven for all you've done. You went too far for too long, knowing full well what you were doing. But I forgive you for what I can. I do not believe a man should be saddled with his past when he wishes to grow, to move forward. Theon is relieved. Ned steps aside, clearing a path through to the opposite archway. Go, find your sister. Bring some honor to your family name. Theon draws himself to his full height. He meets Ned's gaze directly. I won't disappoint you, my lord. Theon moves across the courtyard and disappears through the archway. Interior, silence, night. Theon rushes back into blackness. He sits up. He is back in the belly of silence. The sound of clashing swords is distantly audible above. Hello? Is anyone there? Yara Greyjoy's voice calls back to him from across the room. Theon? Theon scrambles to his feet at the sound of his sister's voice. Yara, where are you? I'm against the wall. Chained. Theon takes a few rapid steps and crashes into a stack of boxes. They fall, startling Theon. Theon! You brought Harug. He's the only one thick enough to attempt this with me. Theon, it's time to go! Theon, you need to go. Harrig sounds like he needs you. I can't leave you. Far into the darkness, Yara is bound to the wall. She is badly beaten. And she is gagged. Yara's disembodied voice continues to speak to Theon from the darkness, urging him to leave. The real Yara is terrified. You have to. I'll be fine here. You know me. Near the stairs, Theon looks toward the sounds of swords clashing. He knows he needs to leave. I will come back for you. I know you will. But you and Harrog need to leave before you're killed. With a glance into the darkness, Theon bolts up the stairs. In the darkness, bound and gagged, Yara is devastated. Exterior silence, night. Theon emerges onto the deck of silence. Harrog holds his own, fighting a soldier. A second soldier lies bloodied on the deck. Took you fucking long enough? With a mighty roar, Herrick slashes his sword across the torso of the soldier. The soldier falls to the deck. Over Herrick's shoulder, Theon sees a group of men approaching the harbor, all brandishing torches. Time to go. Herrick grabs Theon and shoves him toward the gangplank. Any sign of her? She's down there. I couldn't get to her. Did you get lost? You had plenty of time. It's a long story. Frustrated, Herrick follows Theon and they flee the harbor. They disappear into the night as the men, all wearing the Greyjoy sigil, reach the harbor. Euron arrives, a sword in his hand and a wild look in his eye. Let them go. My nephew is my prize for another day. Disappointed by the lack of a fight, the men disperse. Satisfied, Euron continues toward silence. Exterior Winterfell, battlements, night. Daenerys stands, gazing south. Jon finds her and approaches her with care. They look over the snowy land. I'd never seen snow until I came to Westeros. It's beautiful. It is. Even when you can't feel your toes. Even then. I'm sorry. Jon is confused. About what? I haven't treated you fairly. I have endured worse. I acted like you've been keeping this secret. I feel like the world has been keeping a secret from me. The pair lapse into a comfortable silence. What do you plan to do about Cersei's army, now that she has a company from Essos? Cersei will always be a threat, but we have a greater threat in the north. Danny and John look to the north. Interior, King's Landing, Cellar, Night. The halls beneath the Red Keep are black. The single lantern slices through the darkness, creating a path for Cersei and Strickland. The mountain holds the lantern. And how go the preparations? Everything is in place, Your Grace. My men are simply waiting <coughs> on my command. 
as I wait on yours. Very good. You may proceed whenever you please. The small group reaches the end of the hallway. The mountain moves toward through an archway and lights torches as he goes. I have something I wish to show you. Come. Cersei and Strickland step into the cavernous room that the mountain has illuminated. The flickering light falls upon the hulking skulls of ancient dragons, casting menacing shadows. These skulls are all that remains of the once great Targaryen dynasty. They weren't much toward the end, though, withered away to nothing. Cersei motions to a pile of tiny skulls, the same size as that of a small dog, but with much bigger teeth. Strickland steps up to the largest skull, Valerian the Black Dread. My family put an end to the Targaryen kings once and for all many years ago. I will do whatever is necessary to ensure that the final, desperate attempts of the last, last Targaryen come to nothing. Strickland is enamored by the enormous skull. When I'm done, I will no longer have need of strained alliances with the likes of Euron Greyjoy or the Iron Bank, for death will no longer be an issue. The mountain looms in the flickering torchlight. Exterior, King's Landing, streets, night. The relative silence of the nighttime streets of King's Landing is broken by the blood-curdling scream of a woman. The door is thrown open. A Golden Company soldier storms out. In his arms, he carries a small baby. A few houses down, a second door burst open, revealing another Golden Company soldier clutching the baby to his armored chest. This one screams at the top of its lungs. All around the city, doors fly open. The cries of babies and family members follow the Golden Company soldiers marching toward the Red Keep. From the stairs, soldiers can be seen streaming through the streets. Each soldier carries a baby.